Jeannie Patel Thompson from Listen to Your Gut. I'm here with my gorgeous assistant, Lindsay. And I wanted to bring Lindsay on here for you guys because um, she calls herself the queen of herks. And she's had incredibly high sensitivity levels throughout her healing journey. Um, she's had detox challenges that are off the charts, massive allergies. And so I think, and none of that I really experienced during my healing journey. So I wanted for Lindsay and me to do a deep dive on this for you guys so that we can, you know, get her firsthand account and her firsthand experience of, you know, the difficulty she faced what she tried, what worked, what were the game changers for her, um, and so on. So Lindsay, can you start? Um, we know that you, from your videos that you've already done for the Listen to Your Gut YouTube channel, we know that you had um, massive allergies, um, both food and environmental. And um, when you would try to implement some of the healing protocols, your Herxheimer or die off effect was so powerful that it made it really difficult for you to do the protocol. So maybe let's start with um, Jeannie's wild oregano oil protocol, where you combine high dose oregano oil during the day and then a high dose probiotics right at night before you go to bed. Tell us what your experience with that protocol was and how you had to tweak it for your unique highly reactive system. Yeah. Okay, great. So yeah, as Jeannie said, I was one of those super um, hypersensitive type patients. If I would even smell certain herbs or foods, I would almost start getting a reaction. So, I mean, that's like how sensitive I was. So needless to say, if I started ingesting it, it was just like, a nightmare, right? Like I would be sick for hours or days. And it was such a problem. Um, like Jeannie, you were saying too, with the detoxing. So once I did maybe by accident, you know, I took too much or I ate a bad food. It was like, it was like stuck there having a reaction like for days. Um, so one of the things, um, since you talked about the wild oil of oregano, that was really a challenge. Um, I had to do like one drop and even on one drop, when I started, I would have migraines for like three days as one drop. I mean, so it was, it was severe. And so it was a little frustrating because it was like, how can you make headway to even get up to a therapeutic dose mm -hmm. when I couldn't even tolerate, you know, <laughs> one drop. Um, so for that, what we kind of had to tweak is obviously like go low and slow. Um, that was kind of the, the catch all that, um, my coach, when we had to work one-on-one -on -one, since mine was kind of a severe case, um, we kind of took that type of a thing to really slowly increase. And then of course, like taking days in between. So we would do like a two days on one day off type of a situation to have that break, um, focusing more on the elemental diet, just things that would help detox that I was slowly able to work up, you know, and now I can take full doses, but that took probably a good six to eight months or a year before I could really get up high, just because I think I had so much toxin buildup, you know? Um, so yeah, it just, it took a while, but we got there. <laughs> what would you, so when people talk about detox and die off Herxheimer reactions, your top ones are, as you already mentioned, headaches, um, nausea, gas, bloating, usually yeah. increase in bowel movements or loose yeah. bowels, um, joint pain. Are there any others that you would add to that list? Um, for me too, it was like my sinuses as well. So like I already had allergies, as you mentioned in the beginning and a little bit of asthma. So even that would start going where I'm like draining and sneezing, or I'm feeling like I'm getting heartburn that would then like affect the asthma. So everything was kind of intertwined where it was just almost like you kind of just feel like you have the flu. Where it's just like, oh, I just don't feel good. Like everything hurts. 
Um, but you know, with that in mind, I, I try to keep in mind that that was, you know, the die off reaction. But of course, if nobody would have educated me on that, I would have been like, this is too hard, you know, not knowing it was a temporary situation that I could kind of push through and do things to help. <laughs> that was going to be my next question because we get a lot of comments from people. I tried this and I got headaches. I tried this and I got, and, and I was going to ask you what gave you the conviction and the motivation to say, I'm, I'm going to move through this, mm. but you know, and you answered it because you had the education that this was die off. Yeah. Right. If I didn't know that I would just be like, my symptoms are getting worse. You know, I don't want to continue. And I would have kind of freaked out, but I think some other things that also helped was just the determination that I was going to heal. And so I knew what was going on that I was able to kind of calm myself down when I would get stress with the symptoms. I knew what was going on, why it was happening and just the determination that I was going to do this without medication. So that, that helped with that drive. And then of course the tapping, the tapping helped a lot because when things would kind of peak, then your, your stress starts to peak too, because you're having all these symptoms. And so tapping helped me to like calm the emotional response down to where I could think a little bit clearly to then get creative with like, okay, what more could I do to detox? Because we need, obviously need to get this like flowing. <laughs> and what Lindsay's referring to there by tapping is something called acupressure tapping. So you have these acupuncture or acupressure points and you stimulate them while you're, you know, dealing with the issue. Maybe you're talking about it out loud and you're talking about how upset you are and you're tapping on those acupressure points. So that's called um, EFT tapping is the one that most people are familiar with. And I have my own program I created called laser tapping um, that's specifically focused into that connection between the mind body and where these emotional realities live in the tissues and cells of the body. So that's kind of my unique twist on it. But now, Lindsay, what I want to ask you, because this is a question people ask me all the time, and I have my own answer, but how do you distinguish between a Herxheimer and your body saying, I don't tolerate this, I'm allergic to it, or I don't like it? Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky one. I could see how there's so much confusion. I know that I actually, I was thinking about it today, I actually had a lot of foods that I could never tolerate my whole life. Mm -hmm. And once I started on Jeannie's protocols, I had trapped trauma thinking, no, I can't eat that because I haven't been able to eat that for 10 years. All of a sudden I could eat it because I was, I was doing these protocols and the antipathogens and stuff. So it just kind of made me remember that, that I think, you know, you kind of have to tap into your own body wisdom, I would say um, that you can kind of sense and maybe go off of symptoms too with, okay, if I'm really not, this is not sitting well, but this is a different type of a feeling. Then I just took a dose of wild oil of oregano and five minutes later, I'm getting that hurts. So I would kind of do it by timing too. Um, seeing, you know, when I had the reaction, I took a lot of notes yeah. And I would try it at different times because I might have an avocado that before I would break out in hives. And then after I did all the protocols, I was able to have it again, but I tried it at least like three times to make right. sure that it wasn't just, okay, well, that time I tolerated it because I didn't have stress. And then this time I don't know. So I would try it multiple times doing different things. So I, I guess that's kind of what I would say is make sure you're trying it at different times, different environments to really know, you know, I think that's really key for, um, the amount of success someone has or, or how quickly they have success is how can they actually really get this piece that the mind, body, and emotions oh. are completely intertwined. Completely. And, 
And you can't just treat this from a physical level. You can't yeah. just go, well, today I ate that and I had this. No, because today yeah. your mom died. And then, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's yeah. an extreme example, but you yeah. know, there could be anything like today, um, this coworker who you've been having trouble with went off on you. Well, that's going to skew all your physical results and okay. things that happened for that day. Totally, totally. Yeah. And with the food, I came to realize that it's like, you really want to salivate a little bit and be in that calming environment. Whereas I feel like before I was just shoving food down. And so once I kind of realized that, you know, if I can talk with a friend, watch something funny, smile while I'm eating, then I was able to determine a lot more what foods continue to aggravate because I was now in like a stable, calm environment. And that wasn't a, a competing piece of maybe why I wasn't tolerating something, you know? So, That's yeah. really great. Yeah. <laughs> Your actual mind body state that you're in when you consume food, the Dalai Lama said, you can eat anything as long as you eat it with love. Wow. I yeah. Love that. Yeah. It, that's really <laughs> profound, right? You think about that state, like whatever food it is, can I, and, and then that's where I think your body wisdom comes in. Cause yes. if you're sitting there looking at a big Mac, can you actually eat that with love? <laughs> like knowing what's yeah. in it and knowing right. how the animals suffered and knowing, like, I don't think you can. Right. So right there, like your body mind knows the foods that you can eat with love. And, and that's where you start getting that, that interplay between the mind and the emotions in the body. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Kind of listening to the gut. I know um, you had a couple interviews where you said you can kind of lean into even the dosing. So let's say, you know, if you are unsure, it's a Herx or something like that, maybe uh, play into, you know, putting your hand on that belly and saying, okay, well, how many drops do I need? How much can I tolerate? And it could be different for each day or each time. I mean, I fluctuate, like I said, I started on one drop, but I mean, I definitely went up and down. If I'm going through a stressful time or something, I'm not going to do a high dose. So, um, I think just kind of going to a, around your lifestyle. And then after taking those proactive measures with things that you could do for detoxing too, I think is really helpful. So let's get into that. What are some of the ways, um, because I know you've said in our personal conversations that as you were having these Herx reactions, to be able to do some extra detox was really helpful for you. So could you talk about the products and substances that you use to assist you with this detox? And I know you've mentioned Absorb Plus, the elemental diet, getting those liquid nutrients in. Oh yeah. Um, what else were things that really helped you out in terms of being able to detox, but yet not trigger more stuff? <laughs> Yeah, that I think for my body, it was there's always this stagnancy, this kind of stuck. So opening my detox pathways, I think was the key where things could really open up. And I could have more food, I could take more doses, because things were just stuck and not moving. So a couple of things that kind of come to mind, um, glutathione was actually one of my top things. So I mean, um, there's different forms out there. Um, I know Jeannie, you also nebulized glutathione when you had that pneumonia case. Um, so I've done that. That was fantastic to even it, you know, cause then it's kind of systemic too. Um, and then I've done, you know, oral, like the liposomal, um, but taking kind of a, a dose of that, I kind of like some of the liposomal ones, but I've tried different ones. That would help um, a lot with detoxing um, to just kind of get things like flushing and going. Um, also, BP, um, uh, uh, B BCPH shakes, um, which is bentonite clay psyllium husk um, shakes, which I know, Jeannie, um, you're a, a fan of some of those products, and we have it in the listen to your gut shop. But the combination of, of the clays, um, short synopsis for people that aren't familiar and different things like chia, flaxseed, kind of make this um, thicker type shake that 
when you drink it, it absorbs and pulls all the chemicals and toxins. That was huge for me. Mm. I would literally have to take an antipathic then like dose. And then I would take something like that. One of the clays 20 minutes after, otherwise I'd start getting that raging headache. Wow. So, I mean, ideally I think, you know, sometimes you want to have them spread out a little bit more, but I would just start getting sick that quickly. I had to take it that quickly. And Uh once I took that, I could just feel, um, it kind of starting to to pull down that reaction, if that makes sense. That's a super, super awesome tip. And I love the 20 minutes because 20 minutes is long enough for your body to grab that substance and use Mm. it. But just as your body's really, then you're following it with the bentonite to kind of grab all those, um, because candida, as it dies, releases, I believe, 168 different toxins. So that's a massive poison wow. dump happening. It's like, it's like, here's my kick you in the butt on my way out <laughs> of your system. Yeah, so right. you have the bentonite clay there to, and bentonite clay, it adsorbs. So it doesn't just mm-hmm. absorb into the amount of clay that you took. It adsorbs in that, you know, this tiny amount of clay can actually you know, uptake an area the size of half a football field, for example, because it has, think of it like, imagine if it was something that was folded all into each other and had folds and folds and folds, and each of those folds could be fully taken up with receptor sites, something like that, you know? So even though you go, well, I'm only taking a tablespoon, actually good question. What was your dosage of the bentonite? And would you do bentonite on its own or would you always do it with psyllium and how much would you take? Yeah. Okay. So it's been a little bit, so I'm trying to remember, but I remember taking a pretty good spoonful size of the bent tonight. So that was probably like a tea- tablespoon or something like that. And then at that time, I think I was doing psyllium seed, not the husk to yeah. be a little bit gentler. Cause at that time when I was hitting it really hard with that, I still was having some bleeding ulcerations and stuff. So we still were going gentle, but we wanted to get it out. Um, so I think that was the dosing was like one tablespoon. And then, um, I think I did like a half of the psyllium for me. I didn't need a lot of that type of fiber, I guess you could say, because it would just get me going, you know, and I would be running to the bathroom. So for me, I didn't need a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that was a lifesaver that, um, my coach, he kind of had, you know, Dane Johnson, he had that idea to like, okay, you're just be highly reactive with the Herc. So you're going to need something immediately after to take, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. And, you know, for someone who's not sure, just do the bentonite, you know, a tablespoon yeah. or even start at a teaspoon and gradually and work up to a tablespoon um, and see how you do with that. And then if that's going well, try adding some of the psyllium seed. Um, and see how that works for you. Or if your body likes chia seed or flax seed better, um, you know, you can have those as well. So um, awesome. Okay. Is there anything else that you found in your detox managing your Herx journey that was really helpful for you? Um, Well, like I said earlier, a little bit, just to touch a little bit more, the tapping of course was huge for me because then there was a lot of traumas that would get triggered when I would start herxing or eating something bad Um, because it would be like, oh, wow, I feel like five years ago when I ate this similar food or I had this type of sensation, it was almost kind of triggering my traumas. So again, tapping through that of like, this is not the same experience as what we had when I had, when that flare started and I was sick for two years. So there's all these like inner connections and layers that almost started coming out as I was healing as well, like physically. Um, So tapping, walking, um, you know, there's infrared saunas and Epsom salt baths, like all of those things, again, that just kind of help to pull out. But I think the, the tapping, taking time to 
walk and all of that just kind of helped me too with a release besides those physical things that I was taking, you know, that was huge. Yeah. I found the infrared sauna so beneficial that I actually bought one. (laughs) Wow. I have one in my house and my entire family uses it. Whoever comes and stays, they are in that sauna because they can't believe how amazing they feel. And the only thing you have to be careful with, with an infrared sauna, there's two things. Number one, you have to make sure you get one that is not simultaneously giving off electromagnetic radiation. Mm. So it either use the one that I bought and I have a blog post on it, or get yourself a radiation meter, turn it on and go inside and test it because you can't trust the manufacturer, unfortunately, there's a lot of them that are putting out false information. So, but the other thing you need to keep in mind with an infrared sauna is if you're underweight, you can't do it too often because it can cause you to lose weight because of the detox. So in that way, and you know, maybe when you start, you're only going to do 10 minutes at a time. Yeah. Um, And then, you know, maybe no more than once a week. And then like anything, like you said, low and slow, right? Start with a lower temperature, start with a lower time and then slowly, slowly build up. The other thing I really love that you highlighted was walking. I think walking is so underrated and so undervalued as a healing therapy. Yes. Um, It's just, and I remember when I was 99 pounds and I'd almost bled out, I couldn't walk the length of my apartment, but as soon as I could do that, I walked out my apartment door and to the door of the building and then back. And then as soon as I could do that, I walked out my building. I walked to the end of the block and back because as soon as I could get outside, that's your best walking. And if that's, and I did that once a day to start with. Cause that's all my body could take because wow. I didn't want to trigger my body. I didn't want to take right too much energy away from my healing process, but yet you've got to start giving your blood and your respiratory systems a reason to flow and flush. And that's what walking does. And it's totally nurturing and it's totally regenerative for your entire body. So, and do you walk in nature or do you just walk wherever you are? Yeah. I mean, I really try to make it a point to walk in nature too, like somewhere beautiful or the sunset, you know, that's just kind of the icing on the cake. So if for some reason that doesn't happen, I'll still just go out and walk no matter what. But my experience is really similar to yours when I was sick as a dog could barely walk. Right. It was like, I was still going to go out there, even if it was a block. I remember just doing a block yeah, and that was like, wow. (laughs) And then it was a block and a half. And then it just kept expanding, expanding, expanding. And it was also a really great way to see my progress because it was like, wow, I was able to go around our neighborhood, you know, without having to race to a bathroom or something like that. So it was, it was life-saving. I mean, I would almost live for the time when I would be like, is it walk time yet? (laughs) I want to get, you know, I can barely walk, but just what it does for your spirit and kind of takes you off of that hamster wheel of like what's going on, (laughs) Um, which can be a lot when you're sick with Crohn's and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Lindsay. This has been just a wonderful, is there anything else that you'd like to say in closing that you'd like to um, leave us with or anything we've missed? Mm, Yeah, I think we covered some really good stuff, but um, my thing I, I always love to say to all of the LTYG viewers is just, you know, don't give up in looking for your personal answer. Um, I know, and I'm sure Jeannie too, you know, there are times where it's, it's can be such a challenge to navigate these things, or you want to try to do these protocols, but maybe you're having reactions. I just like to say to that, that it is totally possible. You just maybe haven't found your little niche yet. 
it took me a long time, you know, to try to find that perfect little thing. And I'm still changing it because your body, you know, changes. I'm still kind of adapting to it. So I just always like to say to the readers, don't give up um, on what you want and just focus on what you want and you'll, you know, eventually be able to get there. <laughs> just a little encouragement. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you. Come on over to my blog at listentoyourgut.com and just type detox into the search bar. That will pull up all the information we have for you about a number of things we talked about in this video, plus a few more. As you can see, we have a number of detox recipes, which are easy ways to add just a gentle, gradual detox to your regimen.